you have your own extensive catalog. You have stories, novels, short stories, stories and short stories, poems. I mean, you do a lot and you're also an academic. Uh, um, what drives you, you know? Um, so the stories, maybe it's the same thing that drove her. I don't know. The stories come and then they're in here. And then either they come out or they don't come out. And if they don't come out, they stay in here and they drive me a little bonkers. Um, but um, they, they, I keep getting story ideas after, uh, there, there are people who sort of search for story ideas. They come to me literally all the time. I was reading a book last night and I absolutely love the plot by um, uh, Rosemary Stewart, I think. Um, <laughs> And uh, I love the plot and I thought, oh, if I just shift stuff around, then I'd have this whole new plot and I could do this whole thing. And I thought, nope, go away, go away story. Just stay, put, put, <laughs> I'm gonna put you in the story box. I want you to stay here. Um, but um, there are times when I've had story ideas. I had one story idea and I didn't have time to write it. And then by the time I had time to write it, I had another story idea. So I just put them together. And it, it oh, almost, I love that. Did that some yeah. right? She had so many. Her books are dense, dense with story. That's one thing, and maybe that's partly why you see something like something that looks like fantasy, and then it turns out to be science fiction, or science fiction, and then it's melded with fairy tale, um, because there were so many stories in her head. I don't know, but um, that's how it happens with me. I have story ideas come and they start bothering me. And I have too many of them, which is too many of them for the time I have, which is the real problem. I'm trying to carve out more of a space and they come in a lot of different ways. I have novel length ideas and short story length ideas and I have poem ideas that- Do a they lot feel of... distinctive to you, those ideas? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's they do. They have a shape and a, a length and sometimes they, change mm -hmm. um, but especially poetry I mean I write poetry while riding on the metro um because sometimes lovely. I time and I have and I sit there and I go okay I have an idea I'll just jot it down do you think there's, there's an energy behind it that if you don't get it out it's going to turn inward a little bit is that something you experience I mean just from my own experience that, that I mean I'm not nearly as prolific as you but it's an energy thing. If I don't get it out, it starts to eat. Yeah, my brain gets too, my brain gets too cluttered. I have too much stuff going on. And I also feel bad because there was a story and it didn't get told. And oh, so, and yeah. there, there are some things that are from when I was starting out. Um, and I've sort of let them go like, oh, you were really nice, but I wasn't ready to write you at the time. And I can't really write you now. I don't know how I would write you now. So, but but then often I take stuff that I thought of a long time ago and then they become parts of new stories. Um, and sometimes I just tell them, you know, just stay there for a little while because the rest of the story will come. So that all makes sense to me. And it all seems very much, I think you're right. It's very much, I think, how I would guess Tanith was too, actually. Um, just brimming. And if you're brimming, it, I hope you do carve out the time. I really do. Thank you. That's the hardest thing, right? Um, and I was reading actually a little bit about her life and how it took until she could make enough money from her writing for her to be able to quit her job. Um, and we're in a different world now. I don't know who makes enough. Very few people make enough yeah. money from writing. You really have to be quite successful. Um, you, you cannot make, well, no, it, it's a different situation. We we make about as much money from writing short fiction as they did back then, but the prices have skyrocketed, right? You used to be able to actually make a living writing short fiction once upon a Did time. You, see, that would have been my dream because honestly, for me, even like you, I didn't tell you at the time, but as a teen, I was really drawn to short fiction. I mean, I, I still have other collections by other people. And I'm like, that is my first love, but it's not, it's not ever. Yeah, in yeah. the days of Fitzgerald and Hemingway, they could make decent money writing short fiction for magazines. Um, and right. even the genre writers 
they were writing a lot. They were pretty prolific, but there were writers who were just churning out stuff um, for magazines. You know, we don't we don't live in that world. Um, Which doesn't, you know, I hope trying to be silver lining about it, it maybe just means it forces us to ex expand further than we might have otherwise done. Yeah. You know? Um, and maybe to that's do more. We have to, I don't know, um, be more flexible, I think. Yeah, that's very innovative. I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, is there anything you'd like to share about upcoming projects? Well, um, so um, yes. So I will have a short story collection coming out, a new one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure yet. Uh, when, and I'm not sure yet what the title will be. So I will let everyone know when I know. Um, and I'm working on some longer term projects. We were talking a while ago about um, how my life has been really crazy recently because I've been doing a lot of international travel, but there are two uh, pro longer projects that I'm working on. One is I had a short story actually called Pip and the Fairies. Uh, quite some time ago. And when I wrote that short story, I realized that there was in fact a novel in it. So I'm writing a novel version of what was originally a short story. Oh, that sounds, I'm, that sounds, in, in, I'm really interested. Yeah. It's about a um, little girl whose mother wrote children's books about how her daughter, Pip, met fairies. And now she's all grown up and she can't remember whether the fairies were real or not. And her mother has recently died. So she's going back. I love that premise. I really do. Past and trying to figure out, you know, were these fairies real? Um, the other one is actually, uh, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet, but um, it is a book that focuses on my grandparents' apartment in Budapest, which is one of the reasons that I've been in Budapest. Um, and it is the apartment itself. Um, was a place where I found some of this out recently. Um, it um, was uh, a place from which, from its windows, my grandpa, uh, sorry, my grandparents, but also my my mom um, watched the uh, 1956 revolution kind of taking place. There were Soviet tanks coming down the street. And the yeah. little girls, she and her sister were watching from the windows. So I kind of started from that. And recently we found out that um, the, uh, the apartment was actually a safe house for Jewish refugees during World War II. And so yeah. I'm really interested in exploring the way that this one location, this one building, which was built in late 1800s, that it watched kind of history um, I love it. happen right around that area. It it lasted through two world wars and through the communist era. And so it's a very different kind of project for me, but actually it's not so different. I don't know, for me, somehow fantasy is sort of interwoven with everyday life. It always has been. No, that makes complete sense to me. I could have, you talked about having to just and then we'll stop about the renovation of that apartment and I taking it down to the wall, so to speak. And it sort of I, I begin to imagine about what sort of what is emotionally comes out of those walls as it, everything is taken back. It just immediately, of course, it's all the same. Oh, just so interesting. Yeah, and it's in Budapest, and there is something. It, this is this is the immigrant experience that there is something fundamentally fantastical about the American immigrant experience that you come from someplace. And, you know, we were talking about your grandparents, right? Yeah. Well, you're coming from someplace and that place is um, for many people, it's inaccessible or it's hard to access and it's got a different language. It could be Elvish. It could, it's got yeah. this magical food. Um, oh, it is a place so that is lost to us. And so basically that's the, <laughs> the secondary world fantasy. It's so interesting. I have a short story coming out soon that is sort of 
is talking about these very, very things. Uh, it's it's really un uncanny, actually. Um, we'll talk Good. about it. Later. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad. Um, I'm going to uh, end the interview, though, for, and say thank you so much for joining me and for sharing all that you've shared um, about you, your process. And I cannot wait to see what you come up with for this anthology.